Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Manton IV here. I have a lot of messages I am uh, <laughs> processing, and the Lord spoke to me this word uh, earlier today, gave me a title, and he said, Life-altering breakthroughs are coming your way. So I also want to speak about the benefits of excellence. I'm going to continue in, uh, from my book, a message that I did on Sunday. Today is Sunday, the following Sunday, so it looks like I'm going Sunday to Sunday. <clears throat> Welcome all you that are coming on. Sunday I did a uh, great message in a church in another state, and uh, from my book, The Benefits of Excellence, I'm going to try to pick up where I left off. I've been very burdened uh, with a message that I want to bring to you about life-altering breakthrough. And I'm going to do that, but I don't know if I'll do that in this session right here, but the Lord is going to help me to do that. And uh, just very, very, very excited about that. Uh, I recorded something the other day that didn't get out. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> some opposition to that and I was under such a heavy anointing people saw it live but then it didn't you know well I'll, I'll do it again the best I can you know when I want to bring all those keys to you I actually dictated them many of them but right now I feel I want to continue in the benefits of excellence a continuation of that I'll call this part two or part three actually because the original video uh, I had done quite some time ago in a very huge meeting and I believe we have we do have the video of that somewhere in the archives I have to get that one released again and that's where this message was this book was born uh, birthed in that meeting so I was talking about like environment atmosphere and also the five I call them the six W's wisdom and then the five you know like the five is fivefold Five is five senses, and five is five uh, W's, okay, which is what, when, where, who, and why. I said this, that why is pretty easy because you should know why you're doing something. I don't want to take any time on that. I hope you know why you want to do something. And then someone said, when? Well, I say, I want it now. If someone asks me when I want something, usually I say something like, uh, here's a famous uh, Dr. TM, TM4 quote here, a TM4 uh, original. I want it yesterday, today, or tomorrow, whichever comes first. Since yesterday already came and went, it didn't happen then. Okay, so how about today? If today is absolutely not possible, then make it tomorrow by the latest. So, so a lot of times we say, I want it and I want it now. Even when we're praying for patience, we say, Lord, can you give me patience and please hurry up. You know, you know, have, how many ever felt impatient about things? Sometimes you have to wait for things and it's just ridiculous, laborious, ridiculous and laborious. Just pathetic to have to wait all the time, you know. Mostly because of wrong th things in the earth. Usually it's not God's fault, but God does take time. Okay, so uh, I, I've been in a time of prayer and the Lord spoke to me uh, on, on June 12th, today's like day 19, to have a 30 days of prayer thing going on. And I didn't make such a big deal about it everywhere. I'm just doing it, you know, myself and with some intercessors, you know. And uh, I, what I'm feeling, and I'm, I'm hearing confirmation on this from a lot of men of God, that there's... A real serious moment of conviction right now from the Lord for everybody to get things right uh, and in place. Uh, you have to forgive my hair. It's very humid and the humid, humidity just makes it go poo, kaboom. So uh, whatever, I'm not taking time to fix it and all that. Just it is what it is. So, you know, Dr. Mike Murdoch said the prophet's hair, he said he's like Jesus. It just flows everywhere. People say it's a phenomenon, the prophet's hair all over the world. People just talk about it and. It's a phenomenon, you know, it's just, you know, one of my things, and praise the Lord. So I don't want to be like everybody else, do you? I hope you don't want to be like everybody else, I sure don't. I'm very unique. 
So I, I, I'm feeling this, uh, this quaking, like, down in my soul, you know, this, this thing for, like, I hate these cliche catchwords for revival. I'm, not, I'm just going to purposely not use any of them. Let me just speak real in, in t- intellectual language, you know, instead of using the catchwords of revival, renewal, awakening, you know. We use all these words, and I mean, is it really happening for people? But I got to tell you this, in the Holy Ghost, you have to get to the point where you, you say, Lord, I want to be right with you no matter what else goes on in this world. You know what? Because he's the one that's going to make everything good for you. <laughs> he, he's going to be the one that's going to make everything good for you. And if he doesn't, you're finished. And if he does, you're blessed, you know. So I, I want to be on the right side with God. And the only way you have true credibility is when you have integrity. So uh, excellence is part of that. You know, excellence is, uh, I I saw uh, uh, Prophetess Brenda on there, bless you, Brother Wayne and Frank and Walimu, that's a cool name, from Nairobi, bless you, James from somewhere in the United States, James Brett, Bindia Harun, yeah, it's true. Bless you. Welcome on. So, uh, integrity is, is, is a real key, you know, but the number one person you want to be integritous with is God because he wants to be able to trust you. And if he can't trust you, hi, Varric. Blessings to you, too. If he can't trust you, what, what's going to happen? So we need to have excellence in our life. Spiritual excellence is, is the main thing. And then environmental excellence, atmospheric excellence, natural excellence, all kinds of things excellent, you know? And everything in our life to be excellent and above board and beautiful. To be diligent, to think well, to be trustworthy, to have great associations to, so we can have, you know, an upswing in events in our life. You don't want to hang around with people that can't help you. And maybe you can't even help them because they're belligerent, stuck in their ways. So the Lord is just so powerful the way he created everything and did so many things for us. But now what are we going to do for him? Can we get ourselves in order? Can we get ourselves fixed correctly and I, I believe that God is speaking to leaders I'm telling you this is a prophetic word I'm not speaking to you like I hear this and I'm a little pastor somewhere and I hear this I'm talking about this is on a governmental level prophetically to the body of Christ I'm speaking as there's so much great greatness that's about to like erupt and happen and everybody I mean I've been receiving prophetic words from great leaders and apostles about what's about to happen. So I am praying now. That's my preparation. Fasting and praying and really getting into the the presence of God and also dealing with things to help things. Now, here's another thing. Uh, uh, The power of associations. Correct or incorrect associations will, will either increase you or decrease you depending on what they are. Correct associations will... You know, friendships, interaction with people, people you're working with and doing things together will begin to really help you excel in your situation. But if you're with the wrong people, they don't have any brilliance, any great ideas. They don't have, how, how, how can you get help? So you want to be excellent in the presence of God in connection with him. And you also want to be with excellent people. The Lord spoke to me about certain people. He said, you know, they can, they can do this thing, you know. And the Lord said to me also... There's things, he said, there's things, my son, that you can't get done yourself. You can't do yourself. I know that. Maybe the grace is not there, the expertise, the interest to do a certain thing. There are people that are gifted and brilliant in certain areas, and you're not good enough by yourself. Genesis 2.18 was talking about the man without the woman. It's not good for man to be alone, but it's also not good for anyone to be alone. In this world, when you have so many things to get done, you need people to help you. So you need excellence in the realm of right associations. Say amen, somebody. And you need to think. You need to think things through. You need to also have discernment. 
And, and, and the factor of trust. Every loss can be traced to the uh, trusting the wrong person. Every loss in life can be traced to trusting the wrong person or the wrong, you know, situation. Something was a lie, something wasn't true, something was a fraud, something was a con. And there are people that just live to want to steal and to do crooked things and they can smile in your face, but be something else in the other dimension and you don't, you don't need garbage like that going on in your life. So be careful about trust. But I want to tell you something. People that are good, you need them. And you need God to also be able to trust you. I, some years ago, many, many, many years ago, in fact, I, I kept praying this prayer and I was crying to God almost for like a whole year this was going on of my life. And I said, God, I want you to be able to trust me. God, I want you to be able to trust me. I want you to be able to trust me. Trust, trust, trust. I wept. I cried tears. I, I wept. I cried. I cried for days and days and days on end, weeks and months, even up to, I think it was like a year of my life, that, that season of my life. And the Lord took the prayer out of my heart one day because I believe I broke through in, the air, in a certain area and praying over that. And, it, and that prayer wasn't there anymore. And I said, now something. And then the Lord began to open up the most phenomenal doors, do the most phenomenal miracles through our ministry. I'm telling you, it's just uh, beyond uh, the description how, how powerful things happen. So I've been hearing that again. That is a reverberation of this, of a, of a, of a new season coming. That's going to be just uh, absolutely beyond fabulous. And we need to prepare for that. So I have a lot of keys. I'll do this in another broadcast. I just can't do it right now, but uh, it, it'll, it'll, I'm, I believe in God for that release to, to speak this thing. I want to talk to people that have had adversity in their life and troublesome situations and how you can get free from that. But I heard the word of the Lord. I heard the Lord speak to me and say, tell my people, he said, absolutely amazing life-altering breakthroughs are coming your way. And I believe it's within moments, hours, and days it's going to begin to happen. Some, some new things are going to begin to break through for you. I want to jump to a, a, a number 12 here in my, in my book, and there's 40 keys here on excellence, principles on excellence. And one about percept, there's several others, but I want to jump straight over to perceptions. You, you need to really see people as they are. You need God to open your eyes to let God show you who, who somebody is for real, not who you'd like them to be or hope to be or what they say. You need to see the real thing so you can act accordingly. Have you ever made a wrong decision about a situation or somebody and, and uh, you just lament over it forever if, you, if the Lord can't help you to forget? I believe there's times we need this. We, I, I want to call it the Manasseh anointing. Uh, the, Lord made, the name Manasseh meant the Lord made me to forget my trouble. We need that Manasseh touch. And one thing I've been attacking is this, I call it, I, I call, you know, jokingly call them, it's not a joke, but, you know, affectionately call it, not affectionate either, well, how can I say, jokingly say, which, but it's not, a, it's not a joke, but I just have to make myself laugh. I call them the video game demons. Video games, they play in your head, they want you to replay, replay, replay things that didn't go well, or right, or correctly, or the way you wanted them to go. But Isaiah 43, 18 is the remedy for that. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, because I will do a new thing, says the Lord, verse 19, and it shall now spring forth. And he said, I'll even, verse 20, I'll even make rivers to run in the, in, the, in the dry places, waters, living water to run in a dry place, desert, wilderness, hard situation, dry place, dry situation, dry life in any area. A torrent of living water will come. Can you imagine that? I feel the anointing right now. Father, release that living water upon your precious son and your precious daughter. We are kings and priests unto the Most High. You're a lady, you're a queen. There's no men that are queens. Men are kings, or forget it. Let me not deal with that. A king and a, a king, a real man, and a priest unto God. 
not priest from a certain religious thing, but a priest meaning like a representative of God on the earth to do something in the earth. The Lord is uh, serious about who he's created us, to be, created us to be, and we have to cultivate. Here's the message now. We have to cultivate in our imagination, soul, will, mind, emotions, and heart, and spirit what God wants in the realm of creating an excellent life. The benefits of excellence. Oh, there are benefits to them. And I'm going to call this uh, volume two or three, whatever. Two because it's from last Sunday, but the original message was another one. That's, that's separate by itself. So let me call this volume two. The benefits of excellence, volume two. Last Sunday I did volume one. Sadia Riaz, I remember you from a while ago. Welcome on, enjoy the message and share with your friends and stay in touch with me. I know we were chatting online a long time ago. And there you are again. Marion from New York. The Lord bless you. Good to see you here. So our associations and then our perceptions of people and situations. And our friends. Your friends have to be right. You have to have excellence in friendships. You can't be friends with everybody. You, have to, you should have some good rules for who could be your friend or not. Because uh, you, you, need, you need good people in your life. You have a few fools and a few thieves and liars and con artists. Man, they'll bring devastation. And, and you could really feel so bad about people you trusted that were wrong and a horrible mistake you made of trusting the wrong people if you can't get delivered from it. So I'm speaking the fire of deliverance. You may have had a tragedy happen in your life, a serious crime committed against you. I know the pain of those things. I tell you, a horrible uh, attack against you. Horrible things, horrible people, evil people. And you, you can't keep it in your head. There has to be a way for you to get free. I met a woman in Africa, and her family was all killed in, this, in the genocide in Rwanda in 1994. Those hundred days in the middle of April, May, whatever it was, of 94, whenever that was. Hello, my friend in Ghana. God bless you, Peter. Dr. Peter, the Lord bless you, son. And she said she had found it hard to forgive. And she was seriously, like, obese and gifted woman, but you could tell there was a deep pain in her. And I told her, Robert from uh, St. Augustine, bless you, man of God, how are you? The Lord had me tell her, and, you know, because I've had some horrific things happen. I know people have had some horrific things happen to them. And I, and I just grabbed her and I said, look, you have to forgive. You have to forgive. For you, not for them. You can't change the past. You can't bring anything back. Rick Kendall, I believe you're in South Florida. Lord bless you. Welcome on. The, the Lord, we have a mutual couple of friends somewhere. I think he was speaking in a conference with one of my friends in ministry. I can't remember who it was, but we'll talk sometime. The Lord bless you. And you can't go back and redo the clock and redo the past the scene that of what happened, you cannot fix it. You, you, just, you just can't undo it and make it go away and redo it. Although in your mind, I'm sure it could go through your head a thousand times. What if I had done this differently? What if I had done that differently? Could things have had a different outcome? Yes, but you cannot go back and fix the, the past. So we need the power of God now to erase that. I heard one man of God who suffered some things when he was a great, greatly famous world-renowned, you know, I call them A-listers, you know, guys that are just that, like the, the 1 to 20 list of the most famous preachers on the earth in the kingdom. And he's one of them. In fact, he's one of the top few. And he said he got to a point where the Holy Spirit was able to touch him so deeply that he was able to say when asked the question, what about this when you were young? He said, what? They, they were puzzled. How could you say, you know, this happened to you? He said, no, not me. Who are you talking about? 
He wasn't lying. He, he wasn't telling a, sto- a wrong story. He was just saying, uh, God fixed that. Paul Macharia, bless you, son, in, in Kenya. God bless you. The Lord fixed it, and now I'm as if it never happened. Can God give you back your innocence? Can God give you back your sanity? Can God give you back your... Hey, LaShawn, how are you, dear? I wrote a message to our friend, Dr. Miles Monroe's uh, assistant in Nassau, Bahamas, and... We're waiting for a reply from them. You can tell them again. I said hello when you talk to talk to her. The Lord bless you, dear. Good to see you. Maybe I'll see you in the shop another time if I'm there when you're there. I'll say hi to you. From Nassau, Bahamas. So the Lord is uh, watching from Jordan. All right. Hey, Thomas, I know you, Pastor Thomas. You're in Jordan in the Middle East? Great. What are you doing over there? Hope getting some people saved, because <laughs> that'd be a good place for it to happen, wouldn't it? I have I have an interest about Jordan. Israel, you know, the whole Middle East is intriguing to me. I just believe God is going to really, really rain fire down in the Middle East and get so many people saved. We can't leave it the way it is, you know? And it's our job as the church to, yes, dear, I'll pray for you, Celestine. Our job is to see the world changed. And the Lord is, uh, is going to move in the Middle East. Sean Strong, man of God, bless you, from the Midwest. Hey, Sean, the Lord spoke to me Uh uh, a p- tremendous prophetic word. It's very lengthy. It's so long I can make a book out of it about for the heartland of that area there, Missouri and all the surrounding eight states, that pocket of there, I guess from Texas at the bottom up to Illinois at the top and Michigan and all those states and Oklahoma and all those states that go around that, that middle part, piece of America. The Lord spoke a very powerful prophetic word and I have half of it printed and the other half has to be uh, finished in the in the editing process and put out as a document. I will send that out when it's ready, and it's it's riveting what God said He's going to do uh, in the heartland of the U.S. It's going to be phenomenal. I, I mean, believe new awakenings. When we were in this conference in Springfield, Missouri, the power of God just went out from the place like fire. Uh, truck drivers who were part of the church that couldn't be in the conference because they were on the road. Uh, a couple of them they. One or two of them, I don't know all the details, but they called the past, the host, the apostle, and said uh, the power of God hit them while the meeting was going on. Well, I was releasing fire from the microphone, and the power of God was hitting them. Oh, you're in Italy. Bless you, dear. Woo, very international here. So, and they had to pull, they had to pull the truck over. The power of God hit them. People were healed. People were... So that fire went out from that place. We did it in Evangel. The Evangel University main auditorium was the venue of the conference. And that was like a little headquarters there, you know. And, you know, that's the Assembly of God headquarters. And the power of God just went. So God, I tell you, God wants to do something in America. America's not gone. uh, Although we see all this stuff going on now. But God is going to do some phenomenal things in the U.S. Uh, yet and and we're we're here we're here for that job, we're here for that time. The church needs to wake up and get busy now. We need to get people saved, delivered, set in their right minds. Even people in the political arena. I'm believing for God to touch and fill with His Spirit many political people, people in the political arena, in offices of in government that will be touched by God and infiltrate uh, this horrible other agenda that's going on right now and begin to fix some things. So uh, back to the benefits of excellence. I want to tell you, you need great friends. You don't need the wrong people. And I'm I'm praying also, as I was saying, for this, for a deliverance for, for people that have had, you know, situations that the enemy keeps reminding them about 
You don't need to be wasting your time thinking on anything negative. You know, the Lord spoke to me. He said, we need to accentuate the positive and diminish the negative. We need to pre-play the f- our future and stop replaying our past. I mean, whatever happened from a minute ago backward. It's only good if it's relevant for causing something good to go into motion now. But it's not good if it's something that damages your soul, makes you feel bad, makes you regret things, makes you feel pain or any kind of harm or adversity, any fear, any depression, any sadness. All of that is negative. We need to kill those things and begin to accentuate the positive. Isaiah 48, 17 said, he said, I am the Lord your God that causes you, teaches you and causes you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. So God's in the realm of our pro- for our profiting, not for anything adverse or negative. Our mentality has to be there. So I, I wrote this in, in this in my book here. You will progress faster by operating in good aggressive warfare if you'll also lose that God is always in control mentality. God is can be in control of everything, but we're the ones that need to step up the game and... Get into the place of uh, standing his, in his stead in the earth. You know, do you know what in Jesus' name really means? It really means in Christ's stead. Standing in the authority of the Lord as his own representatives. I'll give you another scripture. That's in Jesus' name. That's what it really means. I'll give you another one. Moses was made by God like a God unto Pharaoh. Not just as a man who had some little bit of authority, but he was like a god. He was like another kingdom against their kingdom. In that kind of... but, But that's us. As his prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers anointed business people, and and just even just sons and daughters of God. As, As you as a son or daughter of God, if you're a man, you're a son, a woman, you're a daughter of God, he's giving you that kind of authority. I want to talk about lifestyle. Our lifestyle needs to be one that we're empowered and we're also empowering others. Number 19, identity. Know who you really are. You are royalty. You're his royalty. This is excellence to know that. Do you know that? You're born of God himself. Thus, you're you're his own royal son if you're a man, daughter if you're a woman. Forgiveness, I talked about that, okay? Forgiveness, what it does is it absolves you and releases you from the pain and damage of what other people have done. Pastor Derek, God bless you, my friend. So good to see you. I have to catch up with you. I've been really running. I've been traveling. Daisy Diana, that's a double name. Bless you too, dear. So forgiveness cleanses you from the situation, but it does not absolve the offender of their guilt. They still have to deal with God. Remember, God said in Romans, I think it's Romans 12 or somewhere like that. I don't want to take time to look at the scripture right now. But you can look it up, you Bible scholars and friends. You can, you can find this one. Someone can type it on the screen if you find it. Hello, Tina, dear. Bless you in Dallas. The Lord bless you, dear. Great, uh, great time we had, eh? Thank you again for everything. So the Lord is... Uh, Wanting to reset you and your foundation is solid. Not just firm. You know that song, firm uh, foundation. I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of wishy-washy in my mind. I'm thinking about the solid cement with steel in it. That even if the cement cracked, there's steel rods in there. I had a vision of that. And I shared this on a message that I I delivered in... uh, Dallas, Texas, a few days ago, and the Lord, uh, I'm going to also make this available online, very powerful word, if 
from heaven to the body of Christ. And I saw God making foundations and putting steel rods in the cement. Not just, um, you know, cement by itself, but it's like double, doubly reinforced. And anything you put on top of that, it, even if it were to crack, it wouldn't break. Everything, the steel would hold it all together. So there's steel in the cement. It wasn't just cement or steel that could move or bend. The cement will harden and even make the steel not to move. But if the cement cracked, it's the way I saw the concrete cracked. If it did, the steel holds it together and you could just fix the, the cracks and pour more concrete. God wants to make your life like that. Absolutely, you're invincible, you're un impenetrable, you're, 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 you're irrevocably blessed. You're the head and not the tail in true reality, above only not beneath. You're his royal ambassador on the earth. You cannot be moved. You cannot be shaken. And the Lord is, the Lord is in that thing right now where he's just setting. Now, now, there may be one or two or three spiritual superstars that come across us here and, and listen and say, well... You know, you may be just better than everybody else. And that's great. I commend you. I give you, not one salute, I give you two salutes. Left, right, and left. <laughs> but everybody has issues somewhere. Hey, my friend, Prophet Andrew in, in Africa. The Lord bless you, man. Wasn't that a great picture we took together? And I, I had the scripture, Psalm 133. Uh... Uh, it comes upon the head and down, you know, like how, how pleasant it is, beautiful and pleasant it is to brethren and sisterin to dwell together in unity. And we took a nice photo there in that restaurant after I was preaching that day. That was also on a Sunday. And, uh, yeah. And the Lord, uh, let the Lord direct you, dear. Celestine, let the Lord direct you. Get the witness from him. You'll know for sure when God is directing you somewhere. All roads will lead to the place. I want to say this too. There's a geographical place, an assignment for everyone. There's a what, a where, and a who. What to be doing, who to be doing it with, and where to be doing it. The other two W's are why and when. Well, I said when, we want it now always. We always ask for it now. And why? We should know why we're doing things. But the master W is wisdom. And then those five. What, when, where, who, and why. So the when, we want it right away. The why, we know our motivation is to serve the Lord and to advance his kingdom around the world. But what, where, and who. Very important that you be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing and with the right people. Now, you could be a great person in the wrong place and suffer. You could almost be a wrong person in the right place and get some transmutation of favor <laughs> that comes by being in an atmosphere that's excellent and full of God and all that. You can tap the grace. But you can be the most powerful, most gifted and brilliant, anointed, called and chosen person, but be in the wrong place and in the wrong environment and with the wrong people, and you'll be just like neutralized in effect from having great progress. That's all wrong, and God has to help us sort that out. Let me continue here and find some other. I'm just uh, paging through here. Yeah, dream thieves and fears, you know, things that limit you and try to steal your dream. You need to aggressively attack and kill them. You need to study also because information breeds confidence. And there was a very wealthy man worth about a half a billion dollars that met with a man of God who was a dear friend and mentor of mine for many years, decades even, a long time, and... Uh, uh, he asked He asked his businessman, the man of God asked his businessman, like, what's your biggest secret? What do you think is the most important thing that someone needs to know if they want to be rich and successful? He said, it, the man said instantly, inf information. You have to have more information than other people. Information, like what you know about everything, gives, gives you the realm of rulership. And that. Information is key. 
Security. You need to have security around yourself. You know, the thief only comes to a loaded vault. But he's defeated if you're secure enough. Take that and figure it out and work on that. Your soul living in excellence. Inside your soul, I wrote, lies the genesis. You can see that point here. I know it's backwards there, but I just want to show you where I'm reading it from inside this great book that I wrote that the Lord gave me to write. Inside your soul lies the genesis of all your potential for manifested prosperity. I want to say that again. Inside your soul lies the genesis of all of your potential for manifested prosperity. Your mindsets and your intellect and your thinking must always be moving forward in a positively excellent state. You must be continuously rising higher in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, insight, revelation, illumination, and this will bring you into elevation. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So there's prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. Financially and materially, health-wise and soul-wise, mentally. Stable and sound and wonderful in your mind. God's word. You think it goes without saying, but it doesn't. We need to become uh, very... Brilliant in the knowledge of God's word. Faith. Faith works by love, but faith is the thing that moves mountains. Mark eleven twenty three says, if you have faith and speak to something, it will be done for you. Whatever you say, whatever you need to be removed, whatever you need to receive. You know, Jesus said, I give you keys of the kingdom. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we need to... Uh, Use our faith. Mark eleven twenty four says, what things you, you desire, the things that you desire will be given to you if when you're praying, you believe you receive them. And the Lord said, then you will have them. They'll be given to you, granted unto you, afforded unto you, released unto you, brought to you, you to them, them to you. And things will just begin to work well. By our faith. Environment, I talked about that. You need to have a good environment, great atmosphere. Knowledge, you need to have great knowledge. I talked about that. Information and knowledge. Assertiveness. Oh, I said so many things in this paragraph. I, if I explained every point I made here, we Lord have mercy, this is deep. I gotta, I gotta skip that a little bit. That's a, that's a humdinger. I, I my Lord. Assertiveness. I'll just go to the last point I made in here because it's really a deep uh, paragraph with a lot of points. If, if you never get across the finish line and win the game and possess the prize, you've done absolutely nothing. How's that for a fierce, ruthless way to say it? <laughs> if, you, if you don't get across the finish line and win the game, it's, it's about winning. You don't think it's about winning. It is about winning. And you possess the prize then. If you, unless you cross the finish line, win the game, you know, win the match, win the race, whatever, and possess the prize that comes with winning, you've done absolutely nothing. The benefits of excellence. Sorry to mean to shout there, but I'm getting excited. You got you to tell yourself like that. I have to get to the closing table. I have to get to the, the bottom line. Dr. Angel... In St. Augustine. God bless you, dear. Welcome on. You replay this too? Yeah, I'll make sure you get my book, Wayne. I'll make sure. We'll talk about that. I believe it's available to order on the website, but I can talk to me. I'll see how you can get one. Another thing that goes without saying, we think, but it doesn't. I wrote it in the book here, point number 33. 
which is the crossover number when Jesus was 33 years old. And of course, I, I'm reminded of Jeremiah 33, 3, which is 333. 3, 3. Call upon me and I'll show you great things that you don't know yet. So I wrote this, your connection to the Almighty. We need to properly connect to God and get into that realm of victory and stop remaining in despair and struggling. Suffering and struggling is not your portion in life. Winning and being successful, that is what the Lord has for you. Number, 30, number 34, proactive and creative action. Do it. Just do it. Choices. Oh. Good choices, right? Bad choices, bad. Hope. You need to have hope of a great future, no matter what. Here's a powerful one, number 37. I wrote this, the canvas of your mind. God wants to paint the canvas of your mind. You know, the Bible elites, the fathers of the faith, David, Abraham, they were estimated to be worth approximately $200 billion. $200 billion U.S. dollars. Crazy wealth. Crazy wealth. Job was a multi-billionaire. So was Solomon. So was David. Anyway, I'll pick that up again. Supernatural faith. I talked about that already a little bit. Discernment. I talked about that also. You need to discern. And stepping up onto the higher road. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to pick this up again and continue in this. But I want to tell you, God has life-altering breakthroughs coming forth for you in Jesus name. We need to step up onto the higher road. Again, Isaiah 48:17, the Lord wants to make you to profit. Teach you to profit and make you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. I'm Thomas Manton the 4th. My website is thomasmanton.com. Please do um, sow a seed and connect and partner with us there and on thomasmanton.com, and other information will be in the comments section here where you can connect and sew. You could also get a copy of this book, and I also have with it a great DVD that I did in a great conference on the power to create wealth. Very, very rich teaching, and this kind of teaching and this, these messages you just won't hear almost anywhere. I mean, I listen to a lot of people, and I'll tell you the depth a power of content, brilliant content in these messages. This is just two. I'm writing. I have so many books, so many DVDs, so many messages. We'll be, we're going to be coming out with many more. And prophetic words for the United States and Africa, Europe, all kinds of new things coming. But thank you, my friend, for being my partner. And I just declare in Jesus' name that as you sow, the Lord will have you reap from this anointing, the harvest of new open doors, a great breakthrough, new friends, new opportunities, excellence in every area of your life. So for that, and I'm declaring and praying and prophesying over you that God will begin to answer by fire and give you what he wants you to have and also what you desire, what you need and want. In Jesus' name, I'm Thomas Matthew IV. Love you. Talk to you again on the next broadcast. Amen. Make this a great day. I'm waiting to hear from you. Thank you, partners and friends, for tapping the grace that's on my life and in this ministry. In Jesus' name, the Lord bless you.